Hey everyone, welcome to the Autoimmune Dietitian YouTube channel. My name is Annie Rubin. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist and owner of a private practice that focuses mainly on autoimmune and inflammatory disorders. So in my work with my clients, I help them implement a personalized nutrition roadmap really designed to improve mobility, concentration, and energy levels to help them live the lives that they should be living. So today we are going to talk about something called lipopolysaccharides. Um, lipopolysaccharides, or LPS, are pro-inflammatory agents that have been studied extensively for their effect on the inflammatory response and other chronic health conditions, including autoimmune diseases. These endotoxins live in gram-negative bacteria and can flourish when dysbiosis is present in the gut. So today I'm discussing what these endotoxins are, how they trigger inflammation, and what you can do diet-wise to keep them from wreaking havoc in your body. So before I jump in, I just need to attach my regular disclaimer to this video that the information in today's talk is not the substitute for the diagnosis, treatment, or care of disease by a medical provider. This is for informational purposes only, so please consult your qualified health professional for any changes that you make to your medical care. Okay, so what are lipopolysaccharides, or LPS? LPS is an endotoxin that is found on the surface of gram-negative bacteria. Um, the LPS give these types of bacteria a very strong cell wall, making them resistant to some antibiotics. So when the bacteria cell membrane is breached or breaks, these bacteria release LPS into circulation. So this little molecule or endotoxin is really famous for its ability to initiate an inflammatory response. When they are released from these cells, LPS trigger the release of a number of different cytokines. This inflammatory response is further activated by something called toll-like receptors, 4, or TLR4, um, that recognize and bind to LPS. And when this happens, it activates something called nuclear factor kappa B, or NF kappa B. Um, it's an inflammatory cascade which releases more pro-inflammatory cytokines and something called COX-2. So COX-2, for those of you who don't know, is an enzyme responsible for inflammation and pain. So for instance, when you take a NSAID or like Advil, um, Aleve, that's actually a COX-2 inhibitor. So that's what it's doing. It's inhibiting that enzyme from um, triggering pain and inflammation. So I mentioned that LPS trigger the release of cytokines. Cytokines are actually what recruit white blood cells and other immune cells to the damaged area to clean it up and bring the body back to normal. But they are also trigger these really unpleasant side effects of living with an autoimmune disease. So things like brain fog, fatigue, joint and muscle pain, those types of things. Okay, so why are LPS so bad for us? LPS, again, they're endotoxins, hence the word toxin. Um, they are they cause these really harmful reactions that certain bacteria do in our body. So for instance, if you were to consume um, C. Botul C. botulitis, um, it basically causes botulism. And the paralysis that happens with botulism is triggered by an endotoxin. Um, fever and septic shock are also caused by endotoxins. Um, so LPS have actually been connected to the development of chronic diseases including autoimmune diseases, which is super interesting. LPS has actually been linked to the development of lupus and autoimmune arthritis. The other issue with LPS is when intestinal inflammation is present. So if there's gram-negative bacteria present in your gut and inflammation occurs, the gut lining become, can become more permeable. And this is a problem because then LPS can actually sneak through the gut lining, get into your body circulation, and trigger an additional immune, immune response. So how can you reduce the inflammatory kind of actions of LPS? Well, this has actually been studied pretty extensively on how can we use diet to really reduce inflammation, and especially reduce LPS levels. And there's a, there's a couple of things you can do. So first, several studies have looked at the effect of both prebiotics and probiotics on LPS levels and inflammation. So in terms of prebiotics, and again, prebiotics are what feed your gut microbiome. Um, they are found mostly in resistant starch. So resistant starches actually help to lower inflammation and increased um, bifidobacteria, which is a good gut bacteria. And there's two studies that, um, that focused on this. Probiotics are also have been shown to reduce LPS levels. Um, and they found that with different strains, LPS levels declined with probiotic supplementation. Um, these studies looked at lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, and saccharomyces boulardii. 
So all three of those actually helps lower LPS levels. The second thing you can do is include a lot of omega-3 fatty acids in your diet. Omega-3s are just great for reducing infl inflammation in general, so it's really not a surprise that omega-3 supplementation or an increase of, increase of omega-3s in your diet helped reduce both inflammation and LPS levels. A study from 2015 found that omega-3 fatty acids reduce inflammation in mice that were injected with LPS. They also found that omega-3 fatty acids suppress the TLR4 signaling, which, as I mentioned earlier, triggers an inflammatory reaction in the body. The third thing that you can add is olive oil. I love olive oil. It tastes great. It's so good for you. And it contains lots of phenols that reduce inflammation. In a 2014 study, participants with metabolic syndrome were fed a breakfast made with an olive oil that was either a high, medium, or low phenol-containing oil, and the group that ate the high phenolic olive oil had a greater reduction in LPS and TLR4 proteins. And then the next thing you can do actually isn't diet-related, but it's something that I always tell people to focus on. It's lifestyle and including some parasympathetic nervous system activities. So you're actually using a technique to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. And again, this part of your nervous system is what shuts down a stress response. So when you activate that, that can actually help lower LPS in and of itself, which is pretty awesome. There was a 2014 study where the intervention group received training in meditation, hyperventilation, breathing techniques, and cold exposures, much like uh, the Wim Hof method, if you're familiar with that. The control group received no training. So both groups were then injected with LPS and they looked to see how they reacted. The intervention, intervention group actually had lower pro-inflammatory mediators and had less flu-like symptoms than the control group. So that's pretty awesome that you can just use breath, meditation, and cold exposures to reduce your, um, your uh, sickness, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And then the last thing you can do just generally is eat a healthy diet. So eating fish, fruits and vegetables, um, and you know, just whole foods actually helped reduce LPS levels in another study. So just to recap today, we focused on what LPS are, they're endotoxins that live on gram-negative bacteria, um, you know, why they trigger inflammation. So again, they, they trigger the release of cytokines, they trigger the TLR4 um, kind of uh, cascade, uh, they uh, help with uh, the COX-2 enzyme kind of development. Um, and then the diet things you can do to reduce LPS levels. So again, olive oil, omega-3s, prebiotics, probiotics, um, kicking into that parasympathetic nervous system, just and then just generally a healthy diet. So all these things can help lower LPS and lower inflammation in your body. So for those of you who would like more help managing your autoimmune diseases, your digestive issues, or just reducing inflammation in general, I would love to chat with you. I offer free 15-minute discovery calls to learn about you. And um, yeah, so if you go to my website, andyrubin.com, you can contact me, set that up. Um, I have lots of free information on my website. I have a blog that comes out every other week. I have a bunch of freebies out there um, that you can download for free. And then lastly, I have a weekly newsletter you can sign up for. It comes out every Thursday to your inbox. If you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe. So check that out. So thank you for joining me today. If you like the video, these come out around every week and hit that little subscribe button so you can keep updated on when the next video is released. Um, and I will see you later. Thanks for joining.